everybody. We are here again Sunday afternoon. It feels that feels a little more normal, don't it, on a Sunday afternoon? It does. Um, we did the Solomon one. If you listen to Solomon, we did that kind of flew by the seat of our pants time wise, not information wise, but time wise um, Thursday night. And I was really glad we did. I hope you guys out there check that out because that one was really fun. Either way, I'm here with my brothers, but before we get to that, let me give you the disclaimer real quick. If you've not listened to episode one, you need to cut this one off uh, and go listen to episode one. Um, it will bring you, well, you pretty much can't listen to all, all the podcast and all the episodes. You'll be lost without listening to it, but... That is where we lay out the informative side, and then the rest of them are, are we continuing the information, but then we get into application. Okay, I am here. We have a guest with us today, and uh, I am glad to have him here and covering what we're going to cover because we've been talking about covering this for a couple of months now. And so uh, here we here we are. Uh, matter of fact, I think we've already got some drama. Brother Earl, how are you, buddy? You, you get called out? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. All right, and he's just laughing like he's fixing it. Oh, I just found something. Oh, very good. Well, oh, you found something for the podcast part. Okay, I was assuming you're still on call and you might. We've got real jobs and real stuff going on here. Uh, Brother Robert, how are you, buddy? Fantastic. Glad to be here. Good deal. And to my left is David Alexander. David, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great, sir. Glad to be here. Retired, should I say, retired Lieutenant Colonel. Correct. Yes, sir. David Alexander. He is here, and uh, we are big. If you've probably already seen the uh, the title of this one, it's called "Food Fight," and it's pretty fascinating. It's pretty fascinating, and I can't wait to get in, but into it. So, um, but the reason we have a guest in here today is is uh, my friend David um, is. Well, I'm gonna let you tell. I'm let I'll let him tell you. A little bit about himself, but um, I know that he he has a degree in the area that we're going to be talking about. He owns and operates two gyms. Is that fair? That's correct. Um, and uh, he helps keep me pieced together, and we'll get into that in um, a little bit later. But we we bought a voice of experience, somebody that's on the ground floor of this in many different areas, and uh, I couldn't think of any anybody else better to come sit in with us than him to do so so uh david take the floor for a minute and just tell us about yourself and then i'll get us started and we'll get into the meat meat part of it but i want, I want the people to get to get to know you there for a minute tell us a little bit about yourself okay yeah so as you were saying adrian i am a retired lieutenant colonel from the mississippi army national guard worked full-time for a little over 23 years 31 years total service um, since I retired last June, I've been fully operational in my gym here in Philadelphia. We opened up a, a second location in November of last year in Louisville that, that's up and going as well. So my my day-to-day -day routine now involves just working in the gym primarily. What kind of gym is it? It's a, it's a strength and conditioning gym. Um, I can't call myself a CrossFit gym because I'm not a, an affiliate, but mm -hmm. we do CrossFit-type programming. Mill Dog. Mill Dog Strength and Conditioning. They would kill you in there, too. I'm just trying to tell you. Uh, I had to, We haven't killed anybody yet, but we, yet. we will make you feel like you know, it. You'll wish. You maybe wish. Matter of fact, they do them burpees, and I always tell them if you, if you look up the word burpee in the Greek, it means bail. <laughs> I've said that a few times. Yes, you have. Yes, you know sir. what? I just kind of mean it. So I'm glad he's here. So let me let me tell you what God is here. And I'm going to read some verse of scripture that gives some context of how he got it here. And then we're going to talk about the food fight in the scripture, the food fight that we fight in our own lives. And this is this one's kind of personal for me because, uh, as all of you know, D David probably more so than anybody else here, uh, because David, uh, also Pastor David and his family, and uh, my weight and my inability through the years to control that at times uh, um, was a big deal. It's a big deal to me. I never was like self-conscious about it, but it was the fact that I was just unhealthy. And so this fight in our food, the fight that's in Scripture, 
with food and what's going on in the spirit world with food is substantial. It matters. And we got here because I was reading in Revelation, and I'm going to read that to you in a minute. I don't want you to get bored. I've got to read. I'm going to read um, 13 verses of Scripture from Revelation in a minute. And I know you 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 want to hear the stuff we're coming. So I just want to give you an idea of how we got to where we're at in this room right now. So if you go read Revelation 17, you start seeing the word, uh, the great whore or whore. Uh, and that's if you go look at what that means and listen to people's interpretation, they there are people that have put their interpretation on what that means on everything. And, it, and it, it's the great whore of Babylon. And then they've tried to make it Rome. And then you've got some people in our day and time now that are trying to make it certain denomination or Christian things. And that there's just so much going on. But us here at the God Filter, when you, we see the word her and great whore and all of those things, our minds go into one place. That's right. It says what it says. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. All right. Very good. So – I was I was reading that the great whore whore, um, and then her her started coming all up and up up a lot in eighteen. So now I want to read Revelation eighteen one through thirteen. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, "Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of devils." And the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. There's birds and four-footed beast. For all nations, verse 3, have drunk of the wine of wrath of her. There's her. Her fornication. And, and your mind's automatically like, that's talking about the city of Babylon. Is it? In its entirety. Just hear me out. Uh, drunk with wine of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. David, you're going to have you're going to have something to say about that in a minute. Verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her, my people, and that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues." For her sins have reached into the heavens, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Iniquities, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her work. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she hath saith, saith in her heart, I sit a queen. Where we heard that before. A queen, and am now widow, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Verse 8, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and shall be utterly burned with fire. For the strong, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. It's good right here. Verse 10, hang on. Standing afar off from the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour in thy judgment come. And the merchants, here's where, here's where all this was, this was, this line of thought was given. Verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls, fine lemon, lint, linens, and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of precious wood and of brass and of iron and of marble. And, last verse. And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and all, and fine flour, and wheat, and beast, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Her 
merchandise. Fine flour, all wheat, beast. Wine. What does all that have in common? In common. It's food. Food. It's food. In your body. There is a whole food fight that takes place on multiple levels with different phrases, different meanings, different backdrops. Um, it is food was very important in scripture. So to get us off the ground, before we turn everybody loose in the conversation, Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the beginning. Yeah. I think we ain't even got out of the gate good. And the first restriction that God Almighty put on them was don't eat of this particular food. If you for if you eat of the forbidden fruit, well then you're gonna have some consequence. So right out of the gate, what you eat all of a sudden mattered. And then you get the children of Israel. They end up in Egypt because they're looking for food. And then when they get out of Egypt, they're murmuring and complaining in the desert because they're worried about food. When Then when they get established, you got Levitical law. And Levitical law is there for a number of reasons, for health purposes and sanctification purposes. And there's some things in there that you can't eat. And there's some things in there you can. There was restrictions on food. And then you get to Paul's writing where he's talking about meat that was dead, not to eat the meat that was dedicated uh, or the meat for idols. Now, was that a food problem or was that a servanthood problem? Let's just go with both for whatever reason that apparently there was some food set aside, at least in Paul's writings, there was some food that was set aside that was for the worshiping of other spirits, the gods. Well, we got a war on food today. I'm, I have a war. I'm in a war with food. As with most, most people are, you know, in I, some I, kind of way. I mean, you three gentlemen, I know, we're not, I know we don't have a camera up here, and I'm kind of glad. <laughs> I mean, I know that. We're already being pushed to do so, and I'm just that I'm going to hold the line on that as long as I can. Uh, but looking at you three gentlemen, I, I'm a completely different body type. But all three of y'all that are sitting in front of me are tall and lean. I am shorter and a little more bulky. And 15 months ago, I was way more bulky in a bad way. Why? Because I have an issue with food. So by the time you get to the bodies, and I'm not ruining anything here. We're still setting it up. We're going to turn everybody loose. By the time you get to your body being a temple of the Holy Ghost and and taking care of yourself and all the things, and then all the invasion, look, they've invaded the temple. They've invaded words. They invaded the birds, the bees, <laughs> the, ant, the bur, I mean, flowers, the wood, the temple. They've invaded everything. Why should food be any different? And it is right here in Scripture especially when you get to some of the things they were doing in Jeremiah. Somebody remind me and when it, at the right time to talk about the cakes that the people, that the ladies were baking when we get there. This is what we want to talk about today. Is it, gonna, is it conspiracy theory? Maybe. Is some of it fact? Absolutely. Is it from the spirit world? You better believe it. And so we need to talk about it. So with that said, David Alexander, thank you for being here. And if you had to just start this conversation off as a man, don't, don't you have a degree? What's your degree in? So, yes, sir. My, my bachelor's degree is in sports medicine with an emphasis in exercise science. There you go. So if you was just to start this conversation off with where we are, take it where you want to. And not like I told then you know everybody before we started recording we're going to interject and run roads and chase rabbits but we're still going to accomplish the mission if you had to start with this conversation where would you start well i, I think i'd start with the the epidemic of obesity in mississippi and in the united states when you look at food and our consumption of food and things that have been done and we'll get to some of the things that's been done to our food over the past um, 50 years 
what we have created um, in the United States and across the world is a is an epidemic of obesity, which leads to all your other health concerns and factors, health, heart disease, diabetes, all the sickness that we have in, in so many areas. A lot of it re- relates back to the food that we consume. And if you just look in the state of Mississippi in 2021, according to the Mississippi State Department of, of Health, Mississippi was 39.1% obese. You know, when I say obese, that means uh, a body mass index of 30% or higher, which means when, when you look at a ratio of height to weight. Um, and then in the, in the United States during that same time, it's, the rate was 33.9%. So Mississippi was number 45 in the nation, um, one being the best, 49 being the worst, was, was ranked at the, one of the worst states when it came to obesity. Um, and that has been that way for the past several, several years. And, and if we look at what that leads to when it comes to not only the physical health that it makes us sick, but the emotional health, the mental health, all the things that come with being obese and being sick. Um, when you translate that to our bodies being a temple of the Holy Spirit. And of course, if, if evil and the dark gods can, can make us sick in our bodies, then they are attacking the temple. Well, it's, it's, it's often been said that if you have bad, look, out of your belly shall flow living waters. In, is it Galatians, Robert, that their bellies, Galatians 4, their bellies became their gods, right? It's also mentioned in Philippians 3.19. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking that, about. Whose Either, God is their belly. Their God is their belly. Out of your belly shall flow living water. And you you mentioned that, not on, look, we could talk about the, the, the being fat. Or you can also talk about the other things that comes along with that, with the disease and anxiety and depression. And it is... It is, correct me if I'm wrong, bad gut health often leads to a feeling of anxiety and depression. No, definitely. Like that's a, a scientific fact that if the gut's out of line, then it can map Because I know that I'm, I was hospitalized one time for uh, H. pylori, which is a lining of the gut infection. And it masked itself. They were running... They was it, it masked itself as almost like a heart, like I have heart issues, and then they didn't find anything, and they automatically want to depend it on you're having panic attacks or, you know, bouts with anxiety and depression. Yep. And I'm sitting here going, mm-hmm. and come to find out that's what it was, and that's how it showed itself. And look, this is it, this is not a is this a cal this is not a calorie in calorie out conversation when you start talking about the epidemic of obesity look we're not sitting here calling people overweight we have some you might be but that's not the point of the i mean i am but that's not the point of it the point is this is not just strictly calorie in and calorie out that's right like we're not if you look at the old pictures but you go back okay when okay when did all this change yeah you saw most of your change happening at, in the late 70s early 80s but the the seed of that was all planted in the sixties. The late late fifties, early sixties is when the seeds were all planted. If you look at pictures of people back in the sixties and seventies, and then you look at people today, well, them people don't look the same. Definitely not. Not close. Right? Definitely not. Okay. So we're in the sixties and seventies. Well, that the same sixties and seventies. That's the same sixties and seventies that um, the gods pressed in the United States, and then we get to the abortion issue of legalization, Roe v. Wade, prayers taken out of school. That whole thing, then all the Bible thumpers, you know, are always criticized for bringing up. But if you look at the timeline of when the nosedive started in society and our youth and all the things that we've covered on this podcast – that's also when it started people gaining weight and we've started seeing health issues in the medical field that we had really never seen before. And if right. we had seen them, they were pretty few and far, far between. Yeah, it wasn't right. an epidemic. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, 
Are y'all spiritualizing the use of food as a weapon? That is exactly what we're doing. Just, just to be clear, that's exactly what we're doing. And who knows where that's going to take us. That's why I read what I read to you. Okay, so we have in, in the 60s, David, just jump in where you want to go. Because let's get to what happened in the 60s, the people that did it. The names of so I'm not saying they did it on purpose. I'm not saying they're not. We're just giving you history here. Um, along along came the food pyramid. At least for the first time in '73 in Sweden. That's kind of important. In a minute, the Scandinavians. Uh, Developed in 73 by a lady named Anna. There's, 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 we'll just stop right there for the sake of the podcast. Anna Britt Ag- Agnusiter. However you say that, you know, that is. An educator for Swedish Grocery Cooperative developed the first food pyramid in 1973. The USDA introduced its own version, which was built off of her food pyramid in 1992. And I'll be honest with you, I thought the pyramid was a little older than that. I did too. And maybe I don't have that information, but either way, it was birthed in the 70s. Now, can we, we again, run your road wherever you want to. I'm just going to talk and drive us. Earl's over here digging feverishly. Everybody's looking at something, but I'm the only one talking. Feel free to jump in. Until then, I'm just going to keep talking and go to the food pyramid. The food pyramid the food pyramid doesn't make any sense to me nowadays. No, it, it does not. So, first of all, it's a pyramid. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was waiting for you to get there. Uh, that's what. That's what captivates me about it. That it's a pyramid. First of all, it's. I mean, we are the God filter here. We're not. We're not uh, a, a nutritional company. We're the God filter. First of all, it's a pyramid. What does a pyramid do? Well, what does it represent? Well, we can run those roads all day long. Yeah, a few things is mind, body, and spirit. Connection between the earth and higher spiritual realms. Heightened awareness. A gateway or, or spiritual passage. A storehouse of knowledge. Ascension, harmony, fire, strength. Those are a few things that the pyramid symbolizes. And it's also kind of a triangle. And it goes up and gets small at the top and really wide at the bottom. Okay. So I, using the power of Google, saved this picture in my notes so that we could uh, start at the top of the food pyramid of what you're supposed to eat sparingly. And by the time you get to the bottom, that's what you're supposed to eat a lot of. Now, the, the, very, the very tip top of the food pyramid it says fats, fats, oils, and sweets, and that we are to uh, use sparingly. Does a really poor job of explaining what fats and what oils. Because all fats and all oils are uh, not equal. They're not, they're not equal. Some of them are very beneficial to what you're doing. So next, the next, the next tier down, it gets a little wider, is milk, yogurt, and cheese, two to three servings a day. On the other side of the same tier, it's meat, poultry, fish, dry beans, eggs, and nut groups. Two to three servings a day. The next tier down is vegetable group. Three to five servings a day. And then on the same tier on the other side is a fruit group. Two to four servings a day. And at the bottom, the big one. The foundation of the pyramid. Bread, cereal, rice, and pasta groups. Six to 11 servings a day. 
I, I was talking to I was talking to a couple who are kind of up in years a couple weeks ago, and one of them's diabetic. And we begin to enter into a conversation about what should and should not be eaten as a diabetic. And one of them pulled out the medical diet that they're on. And 50 to 60% type 2 diabetes, 50, per six, 50 to 60% of the diet was carbs. Mm. Mm. So let's feed that diabetes just more sugar. I just didn't understand it. I just did. I was, I mean, I'm got this podcast in mind the whole time. I'm like, I'm surely they're not doing that on purpose. But I thought that if all those things spike insulin and you're trying to keep from spiking insulin and all of them will tell you that bread and rice and pasta and all that will make you fat. And then here's our food pyramid saying three and four times more. Go talk. Don't that sound odd? How about in the United States, the annual metal medical cost of obesity is estimated be to be between one hundred and forty-seven billion and two hundred and ten billion. The majority of these costs come from treating obesity-related diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, certain cancers, and asthma. It's a money maker. So all that bread. Made from wheat, her wheat. All that pasta made from wheat. All that cereal made from wheat. Remember her all, her wheat, her fine flour, refined flour, her. That's why we got here. Okay, well, that ain't the same wheat that the Bible talks about, is it? It's not. Man, man has done a lot to that wheat. What do you mean? As far as, you know, it became important in the late 50s when when a guy named Ansel Keys and um, kind of how we got to that food pyramid that you spoke of. Ansel Keys was an American physiologist in the late 50s who believed that a diet high in fats, saturated fats, was the leading cause of cardiovascular disease in, in, in people. And so... He was able to convince uh, Eisenhower's doctor at the time that this was the case and that they needed to focus a lot of money and a lot of research on the, the saturated fats and a, a, a diet high in those things as being the number one cause of heart disease. And in doing so, convinced the medical community, the president at the time, and the leadership at the time that a diet higher in carbs, carbohydrates, was better for you than a diet with with meat and fats and those type of things in your diet. So in doing so, with with very little research to back that up, in doing so was able to convince um, the mass production or actually not pr- convince, but stimulate and promote foods to be made with higher contents of sugar, higher higher t- contents. Of, when, when, I, when I read, and hold the thought, but mm-hmm. from what I read, the consumption of sugar in his study did not even factor into heart-related issues. That's correct. Go ahead. That's correct. So, so there was a lot of lot of misinformation that he was able to um, to to get by a lot of smart people, and and how that happened. You know, there's a lot of different theory, theories on on how. I got one. Yeah, yeah. Go, go I, I think I think there were some higher higher powers at play, but keys. Um, Again, he, he was able to convince those folks that that's what it was, that we need a diet higher in carbs, higher in some sugars, and uh, less less meat, less fats, those type things. So um, what that stimulated was companies needing to mass produce those items. So normal natural ways to do that were, were not fast enough. We're not mass, we're, they weren't able to produce things that quickly to, to get out to the masses. So that's when you start having people, scientists, manipulate grains, manipulate wheats. And that's kind of when that began. That process started beginning because they needed a way to mass produce, to feed people quickly and more, and to feed more people. Um, and in doing so, slowly introduced more sugars and more carbohydrates to our diet, therefore becoming uh, the, the basis of that food pyramid. You need six to 11 servings of carbohydrates every single day 
I'll, would you? Would you? And I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to lead the conversation. Would you agree that agree that it hides under the umbrella of get your whole grains? Oh yeah, they've used the words whole grains for so long, and it sounds good that you need those whole grains in your in your diet. Okay, so we got Anna Britt Agnes Setter, and we've got Ansel Keys. So in in the 1960s. Um, I'm just going to read the quote. Um, 1960s and 70s, the world's wheat crop. Earl, you've done a lot of smiling over there the last 35 minutes. Is there anything you want to say? Huh? No, I'm working on it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's, we're not going to hit that in recording session without hearing it. In the 1960s and 70s, the world wheat crop was transformed through the Green Revolution. Well, we're in a new green revolution right now um, with the Green New Deal and all of those things. Mm-hmm. Green revolution is what it was called, a movement that involved the development of new wheat varieties and the use of new technologies. Norman Borlag, the father of the green revolution, Borlag developed semi-dwarf wheat varieties that could grow in harsh environments his work increased crop yields and helped fight his work increased crop yields and helped fight global hunger earning him the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 transgenic wheat in the 1980s work there's that 80s thing where you talked mm-hmm. about work cuz all this takes time to develop you just don't go out and 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 produce that in 6 months all right Work again in the first transgenic wheat, which was created using com- combinant DNA techniques. Transgenic wheat lines have higher grain yields and accumulate more nitrogen in the aerial parts of the wheat. Companies like DuPont and Monsanto, these companies propagated the new farming technologies around the world. This is what was given to me when I typed in GMO wheat, which is genetically modified wheat, which means the moment that you divide, you, you'd modified what God gave us, then we are trying to digest something and our bodies is trying to utilize something that it was not intended to use. That's right. Correct. That's correct. And they had to do it. Because, as you said, they're trying to get a bigger crop yield. They, they wanted to get more crops in circulation. And, of course, once you start mass producing, they started seeing the – there was a lot of research money associated with at that time with from the American Heart Association was, was newly established. Uh, Eisenhower was putting a lot of money into research on food and, and being able to food pe- feed people after the war. And so a lot of these players that come into play – were, you know, uh, according to my readings, it looks like we're driven, as with most evil in the world, we're driven by by money. I got a Bible for that, for the love of money is the root of all evil. All evil. Well, okay, so let, let's, let's put a little fascination on it here. So we have uh, Anna Britt, man, I'm tired of saying her last name, Ag- Agnesater, and however they speak, say that it's Swedish. She's from a Scandinavian uh, country. Um, and then we have Nor- uh, Norman Bur- Borlaug, which is a Norwegian name. Now, he's from Canada, moved to Iowa, to the heartland. But it is a Norwegian name, which is also a part of Scandinavia. Scandinavia uh, and the languages spoke in that area is all under a, a Germanic language. Ansel keys. The word Ansel in the Germanic language translates to God-like. Now, where have we heard God-like before? Hmm? Lion. Panea and the lion like men. like men translated into God like men. Sons of Ariel. Well, I don't know if any of his relatives are 
listen to this. We're, we're not trying to pile on anybody. We're just giving you information. There's a reason celiac disease is going crazy right now. There's a reason that there's people that have to have be on gluten-free diets. There's a reason why uh, Alzheimer's um, and and which, diseases which, of – go ahead. Yeah, which they're calling type 3 diabetes now. Yeah, right. There, there's a reason why the, the diabetes company is is – um, and insulin making companies is $110 billion a year. There's a reason why they put the fruit snacks and all the little cereals. It's whole grain, though. It spikes the insulin to the high heavens. That's right. On the bottom so the little kids can see it. And there's a reason why it costs a lot to eat healthy and it's real cheap to eat terribly. There's a reason why we be getting huger and huger. As a society, every day. And the, here's the just some of the reasons. And the church just participates in it. Yep. Right? I mean, we, we spend way more time on potlucks and eating after church on Sunday and, and, and homecoming meals. And you can't have no meetings without feeding everybody. And the church was called to fast. And all the church does is eat. I'm just, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm I'm sitting here uh just trying to look at all the ways that food is an issue in the church and in the people church and then in the health of the people. You know, as 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 a pastor, it, it's hard. I'm trying to drive the conversation here because I know everybody's got a lot to say. And I'm just I mean, I hit that place where you need to interject, go. But it's hard. People are like, no, Brother Adrian, I need you to pray for me because you know, I've been dealing with my blood pressure. Well, like there's a law of there's there's a law of creation here. Like if you're pounding cheeseburgers every day, and you want God to heal you of your high blood pressure. That's not me being mean. That's right. That, that, yeah, there comes some some discipline in there somewhere. Um, and but we as a society, you know, it's not. You know, I, I like to focus on the U.S. because that's where we're at. Um, like you were saying, I watched a, a couple of research studies, uh, a couple of YouTube videos the other day on, on the, the health of the nation. And it talks of most people can go to a 7-Eleven or a convenience store. And so many people get a majority of their calories from a convenience store as opposed to, you know, quality food. Because like you were saying, I can eat all day for about 10 or 15 bucks if it's all convenient st store food. If I go eat a nice meal somewhere or if I try to prepare that with food I buy at the grocery store, you're going to double, sometimes triple that. And then you got to then you got to fix it. And then you got to prepare it. And then then you're running from, you know, from work to ball games, all the things that we get tied up into on in our schedule and food becomes third and fourth on the list and our bodies and our and our health is showing the signs and symptoms of that right now. The the speed that we move in on a daily basis typically drives what we eat every day and if you're one of those if you're not one of those who takes the time and preps your food um you're going to end up eating whatever is available to you at that time and the odds are it's not going to be anything healthy that you that you grab so if, if the grassroots of this does indeed lead us to scandinavia that well where does that where does that take us robert on, on scandinavia i mean you you run through Norse myth mythology, which uh, takes us to the Celts, which runs us back to Galatia, Galatia, right there in Scripture, which were the the beginning of the Scandinavians and and all of that up there. Why why aren't we talking about this? Well, we're talking about it because the Bible says that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and I I am afraid that. I'm, 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 I don't want to say it like that. Let me say it like this. The enemy don't care how he kills us. Just so we're dead. We're dead in our misery. We're dead in our lack of discipline. We're dead in all of that. And that's what happened to me 15 months ago. If you listen to episode one, which I hope you did, uh, that's what happened to me is once all this came about, I, I started 
disciplined myself a little more eating. I wasn't fanatic about it. I started walking a lot and I started seeing some results. And as a man, as a 40, as, as, as a, uh, as a uh, 40, 46 year old man going into being 46 years old, uh, I wouldn't, you know, you get older and, you know, had some levels and hormones and things drop. But if you look at all the food, that's what we want to call it, food. We look at some of the stuff that is, you know, there's stuff you can eat in the United States that they won't sell in other countries. And, and you'll, you'll see that with a lot of the big companies, Kellogg, Nestle, a lot of times their food that goes to other countries because of the restrictions that they have in the other countries, they can't sell the same kind of food. So they'll, they'll not modify to a certain point or they will, will do things differently in food that goes overseas just because of the standards that are set in those countries, which is better for you. But we buy it here. Americans are going to buy it and they're going to sell it. Well, I mean, if you look, if you look at also in the 60s and 70s, when all of this, all of it really happened, what were some other foods that became popular? Soy, tofu. What all those things, what all those things have in common? They're all awful for the testosterone of men. That's just, that's just, that's not spiritual. That's scientific fact that's right. that... I mean, if you look at all of the food, a lot of the foods that we have, a lot of the foods that we have that are highly processed, and in that arena that I just mentioned, they are a killer on the lowering of testosterone in men, which is bad, and the raising of estrogen in women, which is also bad. Yep. And, and well, then you get men with low T through diet, well, then you're going to get a shift. And then when you start talking about all of the antibiotics and all of the chemicals that they put into the meat, and then they noticed that young girls started coming into puberty uh, and their cycles way earlier than they used to, um, that's a whole situation. And a lot of that was attributed to food. That's it. That's, that's an attack. And so when I, when I, I came out, I, I was – when I came out in the filter in episode one, the first 20 minutes, I think it was Robert that told me one time uh, that, that the body is a reflection of the soul. Now, he didn't say that for everybody. He said that to me in a private conversation. And, well, I kind of took that personal, not, not as an offense, but as I look back, it was right. My my body was a reflection of my soul. Now, that, just because somebody's in really good shape and don't fight, that doesn't mean their soul's in good shape either. Let's be clear. Let's be clear on that. And very. But in my case, when he said it, yeah, my my body was a reflection of my soul. And so, part of my way. And if you listen to the spiritual warfare, uh, I don't remember what episode it was in about the circle of influence and fighting and the idolatry to where you go, I think it was depression and hopelessness and anxiousness, whatever it is that this thing wants you to do and it attacks you with depression and hope, go do the opposite. One of mine was that thing when it attacks me, it loves to just sit me on the couch, don't interact with anybody. I'm an emotional eater anyway. I don't have an off switch. Like most people can eat and they get full. I don't. I can eat and then give me about 10 minutes. I need again. And so one of my ways to resist that became diet and exercise. Well, exercise, exercise, exercise to the point doing some stuff that my age, I sh probably shouldn't be doing as hard as I was, but I was just pushing. And uh, then I started going back to see David at, at, at Mill Dog, and that's really helped. And Robert, we worked out together in various places, lifting heavy weights, man stuff. Rawr. But in my case, what I looked like was a reflection of my soul. And I had a terrible diet. And all of the things that a man shouldn't eat, I was eating in, in, in large amounts. 
all the things, even, even some of the things they said is good for us. Look, look at that food pyramid. There should be six to 11 servings of meat, poultry, and fish, beans, and eggs. Hey, how long have they told us that you need to eat eggs, but don't eat a whole thing? Don't eat the yellow part because it'll make your cholesterol go up. Well, man, that has been debunked and killed now. That's right. Yeah, I don't know who had it out for eggs at the time, but they had convinced to stay away from. I mean, why are we? Why are we? Why is? Why are we not getting six to eleven servings of, of, of the high protein foods? Who put this together? Why? Well, it was just they didn't have the technology of the time and understanding. Maybe so. Maybe there was an influence from something else. That's what I believe. Uh, a leading nutritional psychiatrist says. Pull the mic to you. We're sharing some mics here. We had one go out here. Just pull it to you. Push it over there. Doom. There we go. I'm good. There you go. Uh, says there's five types of foods uh, that can make you stressed, tired, processed foods, industrial seed oils, added and refined sugars, fried foods, artificial sweeteners. I bring that up because that's like the number one diet that that everybody I know eats. And to me, as we talk about this, Jesus said, go out and make disciples uh, to, there's a call. And, and you gotta, you got to have a, a certain amount of stamina, not Solomon stamina, but a certain amount yeah, of stamina to, to go out. And, 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 and if, you, if you can't do that and you're stuck on the couch eating a bag of potato chips and looking at social media on your phone, you're probably not going to spend time even picking up the Bible to read that. So to me, I always look for the influence, for the trick, for the the weight that is placed on us spiritually to keep us from doing the things that that we should what, be what doing. Were, what were the foods again? List those foods again that you mean. Processed foods, hmm. industrial seed oils. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, verse 13 of Revelation 18 and all that reading we did. Uh, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil. Go ahead. Added and refined sugars, fried uh, sh- sugars. That I've heard, you know, a lot of people say they say, but I've heard that sugar in the form that we consume it is more addictive than cocaine is, or it's likened to that of cocaine. Sugar, you ever heard somebody say sugar is the devil? I have. I hear that a lot. You ever heard that? Oh, yeah. Not, uh, listen to that literally. <laughs> Like through with your filter ears, sugar's the devil. Go ahead. What was the rest of it? Uh, fried fried foods and, and artificial sweeteners. But again, these foods uh, make you tired and stressed. Uh, if you if you if you can't be your best self, uh, there's no chance that you're going to to go out and share the the gospel. Uh, no chance. That's not accurate. But there's less of a chance that. If, if you're in this cycle that you're going to say, well, I, I'm going to go share the gospel today, or I'm going to study the, the, the word today, or I'm going to, you know, it just, the odds are that's not, that's not going to happen. Uh, and my, what a well, in trick. That, in that with the fine flour and the oil is beast. Now, four-footed beast, in our work, four-footed beast is the main, there's a couple different things, but the main one is bulls, Right. Well, that's bovine. Bovine's where we get beef. Now, I like beef. I don't know about y'all. I do. And then there's this whole this whole movement brought to us by people that want to save animals. Uh, that's the end. And then you get up into the, then you get into the worship of the creation Creation. instead of the worship of the creator. Uh, And I understand that some people are maybe allergic and might not be able to eat 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 animals, but you'd probably eat some chicken or something. But you got beast and sheep and horses. I'm not saying horses was, is a, a food source, but in some countries, mm-hmm. even to this day, horse is a food source. And so then when then once a lot of people still eat beef, now when you get into the feedlots and the hormones and the antibiotics, and the things that they're injecting them with, they got to get more yield. Why do they got to get more yield? Just like the farmers. That's right. Make more money. Yes. They got to get just like the agriculture. They've got to make more money. And so now you even have beef. 
Now you got this whole movement of grass fed only, grass fed chicken, grass fed butter, grass fed uh, cows, bulls, beast. And yeah, it's expensive. Yep. It's not everybody can. And they're making money while most of the country has a lack of money and can only buy the one thing that they're making money on. And the one thing they're making money on is killing the people that don't have the money to buy the stuff that they really need to be buying. And then we're addicted to it because it's so sugar. And they got sugar in everything. You can't hardly find food that ain't got sugar in it yep. somewhere. Well, if it does have that much of an addictive nature, go if you if you're if you eat sugar every day of your life, you probably eat first of all twice as much as you think you do. Second of all, you can come off of it for about five days. Watch how fun that is. That's right. You, That's, you'll you'll realize that addiction when you try that. Earl, you got anything you want to add? You do. I know you do. I'm in trouble. Why are you in trouble? Because that's me. Oh. I eat out of convenience stores. I, 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 me and David will sit down when this is turned off and have a long talk, and I'll mm-hmm. probably have to be at the gym tomorrow morning. Make sure you get in the uh, microphone 30. while you're yeah. doing this so we can but, record um, your yeah, this is here. Yep. This, is the, this is the way I eat. I eat, like I said, out of convenience stores. I, we eat on the run, eat fast. We eat hamburgers at the ball games. We, we, we running and doing everything, and – I'm, I'm sitting here listening because I know this is this is me, this is this is this is who we're talking to. Uh, this 46 years old, I've always never ha- I've never had a problem. I might gain a 10 pounds, 15 pounds during the winter time, but come summertime, it's gone. I've noticed the last two years that that 10 or 15 pounds ain't leaving, and then I add another 10 or 15 pounds to it the next year, and another so. And at the rate I'm going, by the time I'm 50, I'm gonna be over 300 pounds, and that ain't gonna work. This, I, I told I told Adrian on the front end of this one. I don't know anything about food. I eat what tastes good. That's it. You know, we got. I eat what I got time for, and I eat what tastes good. This is gonna getting into this and reading. The, I made a mistake of putting in. Um, I typed in in a, in a search engine, GMO conspiracies, and you think giants are a are a rabbit hole. This stuff goes on, and I'm saying, yeah, it's 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 conspiracies. But if there's ten articles out of what I read that are ten percent true, we're in trouble. We're in major trouble, major trouble. This one ain't gonna be easy. I put the bottle down pretty easy. The bottle, you mean? I mean alcohol. Okay. You know, that's that's that was that was fairly easy. You know, to, to, to stop drinking a, a fifth a day was easy compared to what this is going to be. This is going to be a nightmare. But this is something that, where's that verse? What was the verse you sent out? Um, oh, I can't even find it. I mean, I'm, well, I'm drawing I think, blank. While, while you're looking for it, while you're looking for it, I think that's fascinating because the, go ahead, you found it? The fa- the filter. Yeah, yeah, First Corinthians 3.16. Read, it. Read yeah. it. No, you're not. Let's see. Get in the microphone. No, you're not. That you are the temple of God, yeah. and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Yeah, where the bodies are the temple of the Holy yeah. Ghost. I mean, that's, that's so. If we have an invasion of the temple, wait a minute. If we have an invasion of the temple episode, and we are also the temple, well, then why wouldn't? Well, how would how would that be invaded? And we could look at possession and demon possession and all those things, and that's possible. But what would be one of the most sub subtile, subtle ways to invade the temple? Do it with food. Through, through right. it with food. What you've got right. to have every day. That's right. Right in front of our face. Mm-hmm. You know every that, day. You know that God in the Bible has an, an, an ingredient list for bread. It's called Ezekiel bread. You can buy it today. You need to vet the, the ingredients on it. But they make it today. Called, just go Google Ezekiel bread. And they make it today based on the list of instructions that God gave Ezekiel on how to make bread. So then, then when you, because uh, then there's there's two things that, well, then when you get to Daniel, uh, when we get to Daniel, um, there was the king's meat that he said, I would not defile myself with the king's food. Okay, I've always wondered what that meant. Like, what, what kind of food was different in Babylon? Maybe it was pork. So Gentile food had become 
suspect of being connected to pagan rituals, so it was considered preferable to suffer martyrdom rather than eat it. Now, now this is the culture you brought up, Daniel. This is the culture from 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 them in captivity and in Babylon and all that. It was it was considered better to be put to death than to to eat this pagan food. So uh, when when Daniel said we we don't want the king's meat, test us on this on this other, uh, which was vegetables. Uh, in ten days, they they look better than all the people that had been eating the king's meat. So the you know there there's that. And it makes me wonder what was the king's meat. And I know we just talked about it, but it still makes me wonder because uh, a lot of people ate meat and scrum. I, I mean, my goodness. And the sacrifice of the priest, they would sacrifice the bulls to the Lord. Even the Lord said that the fat was holy unto him. And I like the way that sounds every time I eat a ribeye. Because <laughs> I like the fat. And I'm like, well, there's nothing wrong with it. But animal fat's actually good for you. That's right, it is. I mean, you can't, you can't overindulge in it just like anything else. But it's good for you. It, it, it's it, not processed. If it's not, pro- yeah, right. if it's, if it's, it's not pro- artificial. Like eat a, a, right. a, lot, a lot of the organic, a lot of organic health influencers on social media will tell you, eat the fish, eat the beef, eat the chicken with the skin on it. Yep. Our bodies were made to eat those things. And what have we been told? What do what what people with heart problems we get told all the time? Quit the red meat. Don't eat eggs. Yep. Make sure you get your whole grains. We're not health professionals here. I'm just saying that a lot of the stuff I'm seeing and hearing, and then I read in scripture, it doesn't make it doesn't it, it two and two doesn't equal four. Anyway, Daniel, my, my point of bringing Daniel up is that there was something in the kingdom of Babylon that Daniel said, "No, I'm not eating that," and that principle right there, I feel like can translate through the entirety of the body of Christ. What exactly was the king's meat? And the word meat in the Bible doesn't just mean like flesh. It also means food. So did he mean the king's meat, like pork, beef, chicken, whatever? Or did he mean the king's food in general? Either way, there was something in the king's food that Daniel said, I'm not going to participate in that. And I wish I knew what it was. Yeah. But, but principle-wise, you just look at the self-control he had of saying, I'm not partaking of that food, period. I also, I also, don't, I also don't believe that uh, a per, if a person wants to go vegetarian, by all means do so. Daniel did it for a season. If you do go vegetarian, make sure you're not doing it because you love the animals that much. Because if not, you're going to slip into this worship of animal thing where the creature is worship more than the creator. And that's, that's Romans chapter. That principle is still in play too. Plus, our bodies was made to eat meat. That's right. You know, there's clues in the Bible. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, Jesse said to David, uh, his son, take now uh, for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these 10 loaves and run up to the camp and carry these 10 cheeses under the captain of their thousand and just ask how my sons are doing you know that that's one thing and then john uh john himself you know he he ate food he ate locusts and wild honey so you know what i, I ain't gonna lie to you and y'all know me anybody that knows me or knows i'll eat anything i'll try anything i, I wouldn't mind trying trying some of that locust <laughs> and wild honey. i would prepared properly you'd be on your own man. well i know and i usually am <laughs> But I, I would like to try. But let's be clear on something. The, the, the loaves and fishes, the loaves you just mentioned there, the, the loaves then ain't the same loaves now. The wheat, the barley, the grain, the flour. Sugar. Yes. The flour that all that was turned into to make bread. And, and it ain't the same that we have now. It, it's what God intended our bodies to be able to process. Let me, let me tell you something. When you, when you get to Jeremiah, is it Jeremiah 8? Jeremiah 7 and Jeremiah 43. Okay, the queen of heaven. The queen. Here, just a little filter run here. The, um, I, I can see all the uh, 
overreactors out there reacting to this one before I go. The Queen of Heaven. And they baked cakes. They baked cakes to the Queen of Heaven. Food. Don't, don't leave out the kids and the father, the uh, the husbands that were there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Seven, eighteen. The children gather wood. The fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. To the queen of heaven. To the queen of heaven. Now, clearly, those cakes were made with some type of flour, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you go Google, pick, pull your phone out right now, ladies and gentlemen, and go Google. They made it to the queen of heaven. Who was the queen of heaven in Jeremiah? Yeah. Ashtar, Ishtar. Ishtar. All right. Now, she's known as the great goddess Diana by the time we get to Ephesians. And uh, probably her more popular name in that time was Artemis, right? Now, go Google. They, they made cakes. They kneaded the dough and made cakes. Now, go Google the origins of the birthday cake. It traces right back to Artemis. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, that's why it's in a circle for the moon. And when you light the candles and the smoke arises, first of all, the candles illuminate the moon like the moon's illuminated in the sky. And when the candles go up, it's like smoke and incense going up to Artemis. And it's just right. That we didn't make it up. I'm not saying you shouldn't go have you give your kid a birthday party. I'm just saying it's food. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go get your kid a birthday cake and put 10 or 12 candles on them and let them blow it out and let them make a wish. I don't believe that makes you a pagan. I am saying that that is something that was done, that was brought to us in the origins, if all that is true, and I believe it to be so. And the vehicle was food, which is the point. I am not trying to ruin your house, okay? My kids are just about too big for a birthday cake. Technically, my wife will never stop, and the next time one of them has a birthday next September and she brings a cake in with candles, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, hey, mm -mm, get that out of here. I'm just not going to because I know who my home serves. I know who I serve. But it was done in the way brought to us by the vehicle of food. And it falls right in line with with, with feast and, and the, how food was used and has been used throughout history. To, to either set the stage for um, idolatry or to set the stage for some type of gathering, which led to idolatry. So, we food has been used since the beginning of time to it's a war it's a to set to set those stages. I'm still struggling so bad with the the pyramid. So the <laughs> earliest human uh, man made pyramid was was in Mesopotamia. <laughs> Or, hey, it's Nimrod, ain't it? Uh, well, you know, I'm not going there, but that's where the first pyramid was made. Right. Uh, and just think of some things that 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 have the the shape of pyramids: crystals, um, uh, the the waves of the ocean, uh, volcanoes, uh, m mountain peaks, high places. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, coincidence. I don't know, but you know, high places and food pyramid. You know, just the fact that it's a pyramid. Is enough. It we could have just said that part and been done. Because I remember when I preached what's wrong with the South here of the church, and I mentioned the pyramid standing next to the river in Memphis, Tennessee, and I heard the people in the congregation go, <gasps> and I remember that. Just the fact that it's a pyramid, and the fact that I didn't even see that till today. And did that cross your mind? Uh, no, sir. And who'd you say brought, who, who created the pyramid? Who was that? Huh? You had a name. Were they Scandinavian or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the food pyramid was, uh, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. The food pyramid was given to us by uh, Anna Britt at, you know, maybe say yeah, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Swedish. Swedish. Okay, so Norse. Scandinavian. Mythology. I really wish I had found this earlier. I just stumbled upon this, but in uh, Scandinavian mythology, there is a boar that is roasted every night for the people in Valhalla. Mm. All right, the, the boar's name, and I'm probably going to murder this, is Syremnir. But every night when they eat the next day, it grows back whole. It resurrects itself, and they recook it the next day. Well, how about we just take it to the cult of Dionysus? 
that the, isn't that what you you're the one on your first yeah, one of your exactly first podcast. Would, yeah. Dionysus, what would they do with the goat? They would the they goat. Would, yeah, they would uh, get eat drunk it. and rip it apart, basically. And eat yeah, it. and then eat it. Why? Yeah, because they thought that the getting drunk and eating the goat gave, the them, goat the gave them the power, power of, Dionysus, of Dionysus. Yeah, which is where when we have communion, there's the war of territory on communion. It's like everything else: eat my body, drink my blood. And of course, that's symbolic. And there are some people out there who believe that actually participating in communion is literally drinking and eating the body of your Christ. It's not symbolic. I'm not with them on that. I'm not with them on that. But I believe it's just a remembrance, a way to remember Christ. Um, and, you know, as he said, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. What's the vehicle of that whole conversation there? Food. Food. Yeah. Food. Because wine, getting getting drunk, getting drunk. Wine, whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, okay? Well, uh, verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine mm-hmm. and oil yep. and flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves. We're not even getting into slaves and the souls of men. Okay. What is thine wood? Verse oh, 12. it's probably something. All right, so here's what I want to do. We're an hour and six minutes. That's good. Just for just for fun, just for the sake of it. Mm-hmm. There's a precedent. People, you know, if you're sitting there thinking, "Man, evil is not interested in our health." That is just they are off the reservation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Job chapter two, Satan uh, says to the Lord, "Skin for skin, uh, all, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh." And he will surely curse you to his face, to your face. Uh, so, the the thought that we're under attack from our health sure. is, I mean, that's no doubt. Okay, all right. We should, we still got some time. Is there anything? Because I want to transition into two more topics real quick. Is there anything, David, that you? Had in your notes that you wanted to cover that you didn't cover. Uh, or, it don't or, even matter if it backtracks. Yeah, and we're, and, and we're closing out on the food discussion. Yeah, kind, kind of. We're kind gonna of. we're gonna move into fasting and exercise. Okay, okay. But we're yeah. we're still we're yeah. st- we're not. Well, oh, I know what you're asking. We're not doing that. We're we're st- strictly sticking with food. Today. Okay, okay. Um, and, but, and kind of going off, kind of going off what what Stephen was saying as far as you know your your daily intake of, of food. It, it is. I want everybody to understand that that. Uh, what you eat and how you eat is probably one of the biggest battles most of us fight every day. Whether whether it's the person who is trying to eat so clean and so healthy to perform at a certain level on the athletic field or just in, for health, to those who are, are are just trying to make survive and and raise a family and take care of kids and work all the things you do on a schedule, food is the common thing that most of us are are trying to figure out what is going to be our next meal. So it, it is a battle that, that many of us fight, that many people fight, and then you throw in the, the economic side of it, it makes it that much harder for, for a lot of people to eat well. Um, the, the biggest thing that I can tell people when it comes to eating is to, to try to eat as clean as you can. You know, don't, don't wrap yourself around. Cheap have, meals, not cheat days. That's right. Che- like that. Cheap meals on, on occasion are, are, are fine. Um, when you eat bad, um, and there's so many definitions of, of bad when it comes to eating, when you eat bad consistently over time, that's when you start either the, the weight gain, the sickness that's involved with it starts coming into play. If you can just make small changes through the course of your day, your week, your month, those, be, those changes will, will, will equal some success in your overall health and, and weight. So, um, just little small changes. So I would encourage people to to kind of look at: Am I drinking three cokes a day? Um, let me cut it down to one. Am, am I drinking, you know, all, all this sugar? Let me cut that in half and and try those small steps to start on a way of feeling better and being healthier. Because it is an avenue of the dark world to pr- pursue and capture us. That's right. Well, go ahead, Robert. I was just going to say discipline. Uh, in food uh, is is the same as discipline in studying your Bible, yes. discipline in 
uh, how you live. Uh, so it's a it, very rewarding and uh, uh, pays dividends. That's right. I I have to take this one day at a time and actually use the terminology mostly to my wife. I'm going to win the day. Or if I don't eat now and then I eat later tonight what we plan on eating and I do what I plan to do, then I'll win the day. And I don't win every day. But my where I'm at with my fight, because my fight is big time real, I probably have fight and deal with some type of food addiction or some type of not now. If you run up on me in the street right now, you're going to see a guy that's somewhat muscular and pretty good shape. Yep. But 15 months ago, everybody at this table knows that was not the case. But it's still a, it's still a, I have to win every day. And if I can win four or five days a week, which is my goal, then ultimately I'm going to win. Because on Saturdays, you know, watch college football. So I'm going to eat. I did it yesterday. I, it's stupid. And I was disappointed in myself just yesterday, but I'm going to win today from a calorie. And then we'll start back at the gym tomorrow and getting that done. I get it. Speaking of the gym, anything else that you wanted to cover that you didn't get to cover? We're, we're not trying. We're still going to stay here. Let's talk about fasting and exercise. Both of them mentioned in scripture. We'll start with fasting. And to me, it's my belief that God gave us fasting for a two-fold, two-fold purpose. One, fasting um, is to draw closer to God and for him to draw closer to us. But fasting also, uh, more so in men than women, but you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, fasting, intermittent fasting is real big right now, has some really good advantages for our health and for our bodies. I personally try to fast Monday through Friday, 16 hours a day. So the time I eat late at night or at the time at night I usually eat, which is probably later than y'all, I don't eat again till 2 or 3 o'clock the next day. Uh, that's just me. Fasting, do you, what is your thoughts on the health, not the spiritual side, but the yeah. health part of fasting when it comes to food? I guess it's yeah. all spiritual, but you know what I mean. Right, yeah, and, and I, I believe in it. I, I think everybody's body responds to how, how they fast and how they can fast at different times of the day, how many hours, um, things like that. But but it is very beneficial to allow your body time to 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 reset and, and get rid of some things so that you can, you know, perform at a at a little higher level, whether it just be daily functioning or exercise. So uh, there are some, and again, people benefit in different ways from 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 fasting. But I but I do believe that it's very beneficial. So to fast, if we're called to fast from a spiritual point of view, not only are we overcoming in the spirit world, but there's going to be some things happen in the natural world. That's right. Like and if you go, and I'm go ahead. Yeah, you know, I think like you're saying, you tie it in with the spiritual aspect of it. If our body is a temple and housing the Holy Spirit, if we fast so that we can clean our bodies out, so that we can be closer to the Holy Spirit, then then yeah, that that's going to translate to. To, to physical benefits of, of ridding your body of either excess sugars, excess whatever you have taken in. And especially nowadays when we do eat processed foods and, and additives have been put in our, in our systems, if we can go and, and allow our bodies to naturally, as much as naturally possible, to clean some of that out, there's physical health benefits to doing so. I, I, lo- I, love, I love the fast just from... Uh, no, when I say I love the fast, I'm talking about from the health side, not not necessarily the spiritual side. Uh, I want to be clear. I'm not boasting on fasting. When I say I like to fast, I like to fast from the that 16 hours. By the time I get to 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I like the way I feel. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I eat because I have to. Maybe I've worked out. Maybe I've got something going that evening. you got to feed the body um, to get some results. Get what you feed it, which is why we're here. That's right. What you feed it matters. But I like that functional hunger feeling that I have. Like, I haven't eaten today. Uh, and the functional hunger that I'm in right now, my brain's clear. I don't have that fog, and I'll, I'll really hate to mess that up, but I'm going to have to eat something at some point. So you want to add anything on fa- Of course, we know what we're supposed to do. How long should we fast? Well, spiritually, um, if you... Jesus, I'm not getting into that. You, a fast is a fast. It should be. But if you do, a lot of people do three-day fast for for spiritual purposes. But if you'll also go look at the 
uh, health benefits of a three day, 72 hour fast is 72 hours, right? Yeah. 72 hour fast uh, in the natural body. As if you're doing it for spiritual purposes, you're also going to get some huge, huge, huge results in your natural, in your temple as well. Mm-hmm. So fasting, fasting is just not so that you could be spiritual. It's also going to help in the body, in the food fight. Yep. That we're in. I would just say for the, for 2024, the the time frame that we're living in now, garbage in, garbage out. You can this for physical or spiritual. Uh, you know, it could be uh, you could fast from social media or from other things as well. Just for your. Now nah, let me tell you something about that though. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I used to do that. Remember early on, Earl, I do a fast and no social media, no TV, and all that. Somebody came to me, a friend of mine, who wasn't in a ridiculing way, and said. I like the idea of fasting from social media and TV and all that. But but, but in the Bible, fasting was always from food and sex. That was in there. But then Paul said, don't do that one too long. Not Less too long. temptation, yeah, come back together. Food, food was always from. So ever since then, I've never looked at anything outside of food and considered it biblical or spiritual fasting because I don't have any biblical precedents for it. Mentally, then I think it's uh, okay. Mentally, yeah. There you go. Again, garbage in, garbage, garbage in, out. Garbage in. I see what you're saying. I just wanted to uh, make make sure that I said that because uh, that is a pastoral position that I hold when I take fasting questions or anything on that. Okay, the last. Uh, let's cover one more topic real quick. We're we're in for an hour and sixteen minutes, so we're going to get about hour and twenty five, about like we normally do. So we're good. Exercise. The Bible, the Bible says, Paul, Paul writes and says that exercise profiteth little. But if you read the context of which Paul writes that in, it is in context of a whole bunch of bodily exercise is not going to do you any good if your spirit man is poor and weak. Okay? And there's plenty of people running around at all sorts of gyms that their physical man their, their their physical exercise is profiting very little in their life. For what what profits a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? So we can't use that verse of Scripture to discourage physical exercise because that's not what Paul's doing. Paul is saying that physical exercise under the umbrella of losing your spiritual man, that profits nothing. But for somebody that loves the Lord, that serves the Lord, especially men, we can't speak for women. We're, none of us are women. Never will be. Never have been. Let's be clear about that in our day and time. Speak for uh, men. It's important for us to be strong and healthy from a protective role, from a longevity role. We die early anyway. Look at the life insurance companies. They expect us to die first of all sorts of things. So as we talk about exercise here, and we let, we let David weigh in on that, I want to be clear. Don't, don't come to me with the scripture, well, bodily exercise profiteth little. Yeah, in the context of which Paul wrote it, he's right. It doesn't. It doesn't add a whole lot, but if your servanthood and your focus is on the Lord and you're doing it for the right reasons, there is much profit to be had in exercise. What, what would you, where would you throw exercise in this, David, in the food fight, in the spiritual realm? But it has to translate to the physical realm too. Right. Yes, sir. It's kind of like Robert was saying earlier, you know, if, if physically we're not well, um, all the things that that could hinder, and that's just not with the, with the obesity discussion, but with, with the sickness, with the lethargic, with the lack of energy, the lack of motivation, if we're not feeling physically well, then that will in somehow, some way hinder our spiritual walk. It just, they, they, they're going to be connected. Um, so I think it's critical that we try to maintain some level of physical fitness so that we can do what God has led us to do, whatever that is for, for each individual person. But in order to be able to walk with and follow God's plan for your life, if you're physically unable to do so, that is going to hinder you. There's just no way around it. 
Well, it all comes back to who you serve because I'm going to ask you your recommendation in a minute for exercise, um, amounts, intensity, all of those things. Uh, so I don't want to forget that. I want to say that now before I say this. Uh, it, it all it all depends on who you serve because I have seen people through the years for a long time. Maybe they maybe they big folks. Maybe they they big, not in a good way, and they'll get on this train of diet and exercise and lose a bunch of weight. Next thing you know, they step out on their spouse or they start getting attention from places they're not used to getting attention from. That's the dangerous side of all this. Like you got to know who you serve in the exercise, in the food, in the gym. Man, you you better have, you better know who you serve to go to some gas stations. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, if there's anybody out there that's anti this or anti that, no, you, you can get in trouble doing anything. You can do the wrong thing doing anything. It all comes down to who do you serve. And I happen to think that the right gym, the right diet, followed by the right heart serving the right Lord, can be very, very beneficial and proper and add life to your years. Years to your life, whatever. It's going to add something. It's going to help you be more confident, which is going to lead to things that Robert talked about. Confident in a good way. So what about there's somebody out there listening? We, we, we don't have somebody out there listening. We have somebody in here listening. That Earl has already confessed to the microphone. He's, he, Earl doesn't lift. Me, me and Robert lift at least three times a week. And me and you ruck. That's right. You know, put them backpacks we'll wait on and go. Uh, I do that every day, whether we do it together or not. Yep. Uh, and when I don't, I at least walk. Every day, I walk at least a couple of miles. Sometimes that's with a weighted vest. And then three times a week, I go try to lift heavy. Yep. Because I learned a couple of things. First of all, at my age, muscle is life. If you build new muscle, that's life. Two, the more muscle I build, the more food I get to eat to maintain it. <laughs> huh? Amen. You know, hand in hand. Amen. Right. So now I get to eat a little more. That helps me. And my body baseline of just burning calories is so much better, you know. So when I do cheat, it don't all go straight to my midsection. Anyway, yep. Earl, Earl's not, Earl's, he ain't started. What would your recommendation be from a lifting, building muscle, cardiovascular? Yep. What would your recommendation be? When, just a, diet, diet and exercise, and you know you hit on the diet a while ago a little bit, but right, fourteen so, grams. That's right. So, things. so, so you know, I, whenever I, I don't provide, typically don't provide direct nutritional guidance to any of our athletes at the gym, because I'm, I'm just not certified in that piece of it or trained in that piece of it. But I do know just off of the the type of workouts that we do and the methodology that we follow is if you eat lean meats, good protein, lean meats vegetables nuts and seeds a little bit of fruit and minimize or zero sugar your body will respond in a positive way again that's how god made us with the foods that he provided for us on this earth if we'll focus the majority of our nutrition and i don't I often don't use the word diet because people get scared of the word yeah. diet so if they'll focus the majority of their their eat nutrition on the best foods possible Again, good proteins, good you know vegetables, a little bit of fruit, and I say a little bit of fruit because they're sugar and fruit, so you don't want to go too too crazy with the fruit. Um, that is God sugar. Though. God sugar. It's better sugar than processed sugar right. and that stuff that man puts in there. So fruit is is good for you. Um, but if you'll if you'll focus the majority of your nutrition on good foods, uh, and if you look at a grocery store layout, if you the perimeter perimeter of the grocery store when you're shopping usually has all your fresh produce and your meats. If the majority of your food can come from those areas when you shop, then, then you're on the right track nutrition-wise. And minimize, again, sugar, processed foods, sodas, things that you know. And, and most of we, we know as we're drinking that Dr. Pepper, I shouldn't be drinking this 20 ounces of, of sugar. Um, so things you know you shouldn't be eating, try to minimize those. Um, as far as exercise is concerned, I like to see people get three to five days a week minimum. You know, at, le at least three preferably five, of, of cardio exercise, which means 20 to 25 minutes at an elevated heart rate, 
again, that for everybody, it's going to be different. Just because you're on your feet on your all day working, that is that is no substitute for elevating the heart rate for 20 minutes steadily keeping that, it there. That's right. Because, again, if you've worked that same type of work for years, your body has become trained and accustomed to that. So unless you're doing something different, you're not going to get a stimulus that – uh, invoke some type of change or moder- um, um, modification. So three to five times a week of some type of light cardio, um, two to three, prefer- preferably three to four, um, some strength exercises in there, whether it be some type of load bearing. Um, if, if, if people don't have you know, a full weight gym set up or access to a gym, if they can pick up something heavy, and focus some weight. That fly, that that fly, fly is coming, fishing to catch the raft. And you hate it. He is, yes, sir. I'm trying not to swing at it. So if you can, if you can focus two to three, preferably four times of strength training uh, in some capacity, some load bearing work, then again, that's going to help with bone density. It's going to help with lean muscle mass. And as you were saying, brother Adrian, if you, if the more lean muscle mass that we can build at whatever age we're at, especially our age, especially at our age, yeah. yes. If you can build muscle, lean muscle mass, then, then that will carry over into longevity. So, so most of the people, as, they, as we age, we start losing lean muscle. We start losing the ability to squat and pick things up. So if you can focus, again, if, if I've only got 20 minutes a day, I'm going to do some squats, some push-ups, some load-bearing work, whether that be load-bearing with my body weight push-ups or squats. Pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling. And then I'm going to try to stimulate my heart rate for 20 to 30 minutes, it's, if, if I can, three to four times, three to five times a week. Uh, if you do those things, your body will respond. Now, again, it's key that you you got to do both. You can't, I'm going to start exercising tomorrow, but I'm going to continue to eat the same way I've always eaten because you can't outwork a bad nutrition plan or bad diet. So it's important for if you're if you're needing to make some type of changes for your physical health that you do so in both areas. And again, would small you say changes. that that diet just comes first? The, the nutrition and the baseline comes first. The food, it's, the food fight comes first. Yes, sir. It is it is seventy five to eighty percent of of the work. If you can get a good nutrition plan in on 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 good foods, your body will respond to that with or without exercise. It's going to get healthier. And then you throw in some exercise on top of it, then you're going to have some 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 good results from again just investing so a few changes in in your daily routine. Well, wh- one thing I did, Earl, and whoever out there out there listening, sometimes the gym's a daunting. Who wants to go there? Yep. Uh, and there's some workouts you know only push yourself to places when you get with other people that will help you. But that that's not what I what I brought up. I started at the house outside of walking with my weighted vest. Uh, got me some 35 pound dumbbells. My wife went and got them for me at Walmart. Got on Instagram and found some dumbbell workouts. And those are just about kill you if you keep up with some of those guys. That's right. So I got cardio and that resistant strength training going until finally I outgrew strength wise 35 pound dumbbells. Yep. Instead of, instead of just buying 50s, I was like, well, I'll just, I'm, shown myself i'm committed long enough to spend the money to go to a gym um and now looking back i wish i would have just started going to the gym to start with Mm -hmm. but i started somewhere it's something that's right and that's the biggest thing that's the biggest thing for most people is just you to start yeah you you, you, you've got to get to the point where you've had enough and you've got to start all right we will uh we'll leave it there we get get the last words um this has been fun i've enjoyed this Brother yes. David, any last words you want to leave us with? Encouragement, yeah. tips, whether it's spiritual, whether it's from the the health side, whichever it, whatever it may be. Take, yeah. Go ahead. Just if, if I can, if I can leave everybody with one, you know, final thought is I I understand how difficult it is for so many people to to either make the time, find the time to exercise and to eat right. I understand that there's so many things going on in people's lives, but I encourage you to to take a step in the right direction whether that be starting to walk every day, whether that be to cut out some of those soft drinks every day, whatever it is, take some steps today towards a better and healthier you. Um, your children will thank you for it. Your, your family, um, you'll be better at work. You'll be, be, you'll be better in every aspect of your life if you feel better. And if we feel better, then that 
that just encourages more spiritual growth and, and energy to do things that the God that God has put us here for to do. So um, look at it as a it's not impossible. It's just you got to take that first step. And again, his name is David Alexander. He is the owner of Mill Dog Strength and Conditioning here in Philadelphia, Mississippi. He's also a a member of the Sanctuary of Philadelphia here and uh, a friend of mine. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us Thank today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. Brother Robert, any last words, buddy? So if we believe what Scripture says, that Satan is a roaring lion uh, here to steal, kill, and destroy. Seeking whom he may devour. There you go. Then then you got to realize that spiritual warfare is real. Any Anything is on the table as far as uh, how he can uh, take us down, right? So I do believe physical fitness is important. And, you know, we say every day, let's... Let's fight. Let's fight. Today we fight, or tomorrow we fight again. We fight again. And so I just think that, that that's very important. Hebrews 12, uh, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You know, that's a spiritual race, but I think the, 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 the you know, it's easy to, to see where, you know, Jesus walked everywhere he went. Um, it, you know, people were just physically in better shape uh, than than what we are now. And so, no matter what that looks like for you, the longest journey starts with the yeah. first step. Yep. Amen. Thank y'all. Love y'all, brother. Earl, any last re- any last resort? Any <laughs> any last remarks? Um, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm sitting here thinking. I, I used to do. I did triathlons um years ago but sitting here listening and talking to y'all um even while i was doing triathlons i would leave the house on my bike and and ride the 27 miles but i kept a pack of cigarettes in my little compartment under my back seat and i would smoke while i was doing triathlons and i'm sitting here thinking you idiot you could have fixed all this 15 years ago by just stopping one thing and not the triathlons, but <laughs> here we are now. And the older you get, the worse you feel. Let's, let's be honest about that. So, yeah, I might do something. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, good. David. Appreciate it. Thank you. Listen, uh, my, my closing remarks are very simple, uh, and we'll, we'll get you out of here. Um, it's like anything else. From the food, to taking care of yourself best you can. And the best you can, usually we don't do the best we can either. So the best you can can't be an excuse because sometimes the best I can, that's um, I let myself down there. Anyway, with all of this, it's like everything else. You have to look around and you have to ask yourself. Not everybody's body is going to be a reflection of their soul. I'm not saying that. In my case, that was the case. And I had to look around in my body, in my eating, and in my lifting and I had to ask myself, Adrian, who do you serve? Love you guys. Have a great week. God bless. Look forward to being with you again soon. <laughs>